Hey everyone, welcome to another slow MTG box opening. We've got MTG today, new set, Dungeons & Dragons Adventure in the Forgotten Realms. First off, apologies, there's lots of things happening in the neighborhood. There's a funeral across where there's a lot of chanting going on. It's an Asian funeral. Anyway, got this from LGS, includes a buy a box promo. This is not exclusive uh, to outside of the, the what you can get in the booster packs. It's Vorpal Sword, really cool ability here. It's the extended art version, full foil. Uh, it's black, one black, it comes into play, equipment, equipped creature gets plus two plus oh, and it's death touch, equip is black black. But if you pay five and triple black until end of turn, whenever equipped creature deals damage to a player, that player loses the game. So the, the, the living the dream is to one shot somebody in commander or even in draft or seal or standard with one of these things. So as you know, people have gone bonkers about this. Dungeons and Dragons finally, and a uh, Wizards franchise, that they've decided to finally make some magic cards around. So I'm gonna open set booster and pre-release pack here. A pre-release kit looks like a typical ones in the past few ones. They keep changing the shape. Sometimes it's you know square, sometimes it's rectangle. So we've got this kit here. I've got Drizzard Duodon on this. Really cool. Let's see what's in it. Now these ones, unfortunately, in my local LGS, not everyone's able to have you know, in-store play at the moment. So we've got a flip box like this, as you can see. And then you've got, I think, a stamp promo. I'll, I'll, I'll look at that later. And then some really cool goodies in here. So you've got, before that, you've got one of uh, usual insert to store your dice. And then you've got die here. This one's green. And you've got the AFR logo over here. Can't really see. There we go, boom. Okay, so I'm gonna keep all this aside and keep this a secret. Let's have a look. Some other goodies here. You got the box divider. And what's really cool about this is you've got these dungeons, it's a new mechanic, but if you get a pre-release release pack, you've got three of these, they're in foil. And the back, it's foil tokens. This guy is the 4-4 uh, Death Touch legendary creature that happens when you complete the Tomb of Annihilation. Really cool, one of the only places where you can get the foil uh, dungeons. And then, that sucks, usually you get a, a pre-release code that gives you six packs of draft boosters on Arena, but unfortunately, because this is Asia, there are certain parts of Asia where the licensing hasn't been sorted out, so unfortunately, we won't get the promo codes in some parts of Asia. You get it in Australia, but in places like Singapore, Malaysia, sucks. Come on, Tencent, get your licensing right so we can get those codes. Anyway, a bit of a guide to the dungeon, how to, how to play Seal. And then you've got six draft booster packs to make up your deck and one foil stamp promo. I'll come to that in a moment. They've changed the stamp. It used to be dates, but I think now it's just a symbol on it. Anyway, I'll start cracking these draft booster packs before I get into the set boosters. Uh, these, I think, are uh, Mini America packs. The, the packs just fall apart. Wow, they've got, actually got a new card that explains archetypes. This is really helpful in, in sealed. Sorry, I'll just adjust the camera there. You got your draft archetypes, really cool. And a token, Vecna, this is cool. This is a nice one. It tells you sort of what sort of color combinations you get. So if you got Selesnia, it's really about life gain. So as usual, these draft packs, you've got uh, 10 commons, and then you've got three uncommons. So first uncommon here, one, second, and these are cool, these are new class cards. Class cards serve as sort of enchantments, but you can pay to level up. Remember those level up creatures that, you know, was a sort of prototype for Planeswalkers, so, and it's a cross between enchant, the saga cards and the level up cards. So when it comes in, you get the first ability, it's always persistent, then you pay whatever it says here, and then at sorcery speed, and then you upgrade to the next ability, and the third ability. So in this case, the first one says if you roll one or more dice instead, roll that many dice plus one and ignore the low roll so you get to do a Yahtzee thing. If you pay two, whenever you roll one or more dice, target creature you control gets plus two plus oh and gains menace at the end of turn and you pay two and a red, creatures you control have haste. Not bad, but I played a game on Arena where the guy spent his first three turns leveling up to the max and then I just beat him down when he did that. Anyway, so we've got the rare. Loyal Warhound, nothing special. It's a dog, you can search. It's kind of cool though. It's got a bit of a land tax ability. Good ramp ramping for white. And then you've got one of the AFR uh, planes. So are you guys excited about Forgotten Realms in finally getting into the magic world? 
I was a little bit underwhelmed by the power of the cards when I looked at them. I, I love the theme, but if you're used to the old powerful cards that were in the that determined ooh, the last few standards, then you know you'd be disappointed because they really powered down the creatures now. What's really cool also, they've got these sort of DD thematic keywords. They they did they they sort of choose your own adventure. Like look at this card. You see a guard approach and then you have two options. Do you distract the guard? If you do, you tap the target creature, or do you hide? If you hide target creature, you control gate and it's hexproof. So very, very flavorful. They've got this on quite a few cards, as you see here. And then of course, they've got these ones that, that take into account the old D&D &D rule books. Here, this is uncommon. I think they get seeded like your showcase cards in the last few sets. Quite a powerful one. When you gain life, put plus one, plus one counter and scry one. And then this guy is pretty good for venture and the dungeon. And then uncommon, ooh, nice, double. You got foil, rare, not foil, non-foil, orca jelly. So an ooze, it's an X ooze. And then you got planes, and then you got one of the dungeon cards with a skeleton at the back. Really nice, really beautiful. So that's not a bad pack. Haven't hit a mythic yet. So if we do, I will shout for joy. You'll see how we go. Anyway, zip through all this. I see a foil, Grim Bounty, one of the more powerful uh, commons. Portable hole could potentially make its way in modern. One mana removal, not sorcery speed though. Pretty good, pretty good one. Here's the rare. When he attacks uh, or enters the battlefield, venture, and then other creatures get an anthem as long as you complete a dungeon. Ooh, foil mythic, flame skull. That is nice. Foil mythic, flame skull, not the most powerful mythic. I think the blue dragon is. Uh, it can't block, it's flying 3 1. Whenever it dies, exile it. If you do exile the top card of your library until the end of next turn, you may play one of that card. Feels a little bit underpowered for a mythic, but that's really nice. Still, nice to have a foil mythic in the card pool. I'll see what I can build with this just for fun after. I haven't really looked at the cards to see this, how powerful they are. Yo, I got another one Kaylin, Reclusive Painter. It's cute. And then the rare, this is one of the manlands in the cycle, really good. So this is one of the, the white one I think is quite powerful, so it's a red one. This one is a bit expensive, but it's still kind of cool. You can exile cards when you attack, but three and four. Got a mountain and then upside down token with, yeah, so so far can't complain. Two more cards. Black's looking strong for what I can see in this in this pool, but I haven't looked too closely anyway. So I'm going to make some removal. This is really good. Here's another one in common. Oh, I better check the common slots to see. They can be seeded anywhere. So one of these in common. Uh, and then you've got the uncommons. Bag of holding that was downshifted from rare to uncommon. Got treasure chest. <laughs> kind of cool, like a bag. It's a D20. It's nice. Uh, you could get trapped if you roll one. You lose three life. Or you can search for a tutor or a card. Artifact card. And then you can put it in a better fuel. Otherwise, you can put it in your hand. That's really good. And then you've got an island and upside down card again. I really like the treasure chest, super thematic. Not sure if it's how good it is in sealed, probably not very good, but you know what? It's all right, it can be played in other formats. Another unexpected windfall, mimic, ramp, find some prisoners, tropic outlander, rally maneuver. Here's a nice rare, paladin class. It's attacks, and then an anthem, and then this is really good. Oh. Yep, that's it. So, and we've got the foil. I'll, I'll, I'll put this as a secret and we'll see. Oh, it's a blue card. What is it? Is it blue? Is it blue? It's a rare, it's treasure chest. Sorry, it's artifact. So I've got foil treasure chest over there. And what I want to show you is the stamp on this. I'm going to open this. They used to stamp the date. I think people really hate, hated date cards. So right now what they've done is they've put a really nice more classy, sort of 2021, 2022, or 2021, yeah. There we go. I've just gone into the future. Okay, that's my opening for pre-release packs. Let's move on to the main entertainment. Actually, you know what? I'll do this in a separate video. All right, cool. Thanks for joining. See you guys. Bye.